Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 836. <laughs> it's going to be a mouthful. Uh, today's topic is about first dates, and the topic is how well do you prep for your first date? As in, how well do you really prepare? And it's going to be a few things, and there's some obvious things and some subtle things, but before I give you all of those things, let me, let me introduce myself and explain why I do these talks every day and why there's 836 of them. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, I am an inspirational speaker most of the time and the um, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend it because I wrote it and I'll put a link in the comments for you to pick it up a copy at the end of the broadcast. I'm also a relationship and love expert, having been doing this stuff for a long time now and studying for many, many years. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am so you can figure that out for yourself, but I'm, really helping women create balance in love, life, and business. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. It's what drives my work, it's what informs my work, it also is what started these talks almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're at episode number 836, and I will tell you at the back end, by the way, where you can find all the replays, and this is a Facebook Live first before you wonder if you're watching on YouTube or wherever, and it will end up on YouTube as well, so again, those will all be at the back end of the, of the broadcast. I'll give you the links where you can find me. So the topic today is about first dates and preparation. I was going to play with some other titles, but the reality is what I want to speak to is not just, well, let's, just, let's start with easy stuff. Do you put any effort into what you wear? Do you put any effort into how you uh, appear and dress yourself and... Maybe take a shower before you go on a date. I mean, these are the simplistic things. And I'm playing that way simply because I want to go a lot deeper in a moment. But the understanding that there's a lot of effort that can be put into dates that are worth it. And it's not so much for the other person, it's for yourself. Because the thing about the first dates for a lot of people is, is about they want to impress the other person. Well, why not impress yourself? <laughs> why not dress yourself up so you feel good? Not so much that you dress to make the other person think you're sexy or attractive, whatever that is, but you dress so that you feel good. See, for my rule of thumb, I'd rather be dressed up so I like how I look in the mirror and how I feel about myself, so when I go on the date, I feel good, and that means actually I'll look better because I'll be more relaxed, more comfortable in who I am. If I dress up how I think the other person wants to see me, I'm in trouble. And I'll say that's true for anybody. So on a simple external level, put the F into cleaning yourself up, making yourself look good, whatever terms you want to use, so that you enjoy yourself being on the date. What a concept. You can't actually go out and enjoy yourself being on a date, regardless of the other, regardless of the other person. But it sounds so simplistic, but do that. Um, a little story to go with this, because I have a few stories up my sleeve, somewhere up my sleeve. Um, I've shared this story before, but basically I was, and this was this probably wasn't the first date, but this is going to make a point. I was up in the Bay Area, up in San, um, San Jose with a friend of mine. God, it's got to go back three, four years? No, more than that. Five years ago? No, it's been a few years. Anyway, that's irrelevant. We were sitting, we went out to a place in San, in San Jose, there's a place called Santana Row, which is like a walk street. Um, kind of like the third street promenade in Santa Monica, but better. Lots of restaurants and stuff. Anyway, we were sitting out after having had dinner and, and drinks. We're at this little little cafe um, that did pastries and stuff and coffee, beautiful pastries, really Italian, really Italian job, nice place. We're sitting outside, it's a warm summer evening, we're just relaxing, having cappuccinos and, and having these, well, um, damn, I, the name. I was going to remember the name of the cake in a moment, oh well, anyway, again, irrelevant stuff. We're sitting there watching the people go by, just people watching the evening, it's probably 9 o'clock, 9.30, and this couple walked by, which stuck in my head, it's, it's stuck in my head since then. Couple walks by, and she's they're both gorgeous, they're probably in their early 30s, my guess. She's gorgeous, dressed up in a beautiful summer dress, blue, I think, if I remember correctly. Very shapely, very sexy. Um, she had tanned legs, she wasn't wearing hose, it was high, it was high summer, it's pretty warm. With little stack heels, beautiful, beautiful outfit, clean, elegant, pretty. He's along with her, and he's got torn jeans, flip flops, baseball cap on backwards, and a t shirt that was looked look, like it was, you know. I hadn't seen the laundry in a few weeks. I was talking to my friend, it's like, if I didn't have, if it, didn't, if it wasn't for the fact he was bigger than me, I was going to go up to the guy and shake him by the scruff of the neck and say, dude, respect her by dressing up. Now, this is the wrong way around by what I just said. 
But the thing is, that's another part of the puzzle. Is if you're going on a date, and this may not be the first date, but you're going on a second or third date, is having the wherewithal to dress to respect the person you're with as well. So this is the second piece. So dress so you, you love, love yourself and enjoy yourself being on the date. Secondly, it's dress so you're also honoring the person you're with. It's actually because my friend's broadcast, I'll, I'll tag her in the comments afterwards. Um, because she mentioned this when she was on a date. She actually was doing a live, a live video from uh, Marshalls, I think she was at, a store, using the mirror to show what she was looking like. Now, the guy she went out with didn't even bother. So that's a key part of it too. Yes, dress to impress yourself. Dress so you feel good when you're on the date, so you're having a nice time. But also, dress so you look good for the other person. Ideally, they coincide, by the way. If they don't, there might be some issues there. Hmm. I'm not going to get into that one right now. Now let's dive in a little deeper, shall we? When I talk about preparing for a date, I'm going to say this, I'm going to put this. Be clear what you want. I'll say it that way. I have myself made this mistake more than once of going on a date sight unseen, so to speak, without any pre-qualification, without any understanding of the other person, who they are, what they're about. Maybe just some pictures, you know, from the dating app type stuff. I'll show you done the same thing. But without really knowing what the other person was about, I didn't do any preliminary, as she put it. Um, I love the way she put it. She was talking about, talking about sales funnels and pre-qualifying, which I think is really appropriate in talking about dating. So I'm borrowing that from her. Again, I'll tag her in the comments so she'll know what I'm talking about her. The idea being, though, is that same as when you're doing, if you're in the business world and you want to sell something, you don't just want to sell blindly. You want to find the right people to buy from you. You create a sales funnel where you have invitations to get to know the person and you qualify them through levels to decide if you want to sell to them or not as a client or as a, as a, product, as a buyer of what you're selling. It parallels in some ways how dates work, as strange as it sounds. And I, think, I love the way she put it. I'm, I'm borrowing her blind, I mean, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like lock, stock, and two, lock, stock, and, <laughs> lock, stock, and barrel. I'm taking, I'm taking what she said and using it here. But the context I'm going to give you is something deeper than that, which is before you go on the date, before you even choose who you want to go on a date with, get clear what you want. Really get clear what you want. I was talking to a friend of mine today on the way, on the way home from Agape um, that she didn't really qualify the date. And she went out, she went out with this, she met this guy and went out for a date. And he's like, he's like 30 years older than her. And she realized he's too old. But for some reason, she didn't have that on her list. So it's important, and I'm not saying you have to have a list you take with you, but get clear what you really want. That preparation for a date, to know that you want someone who is the right height, the right um, how white weight, height, balance, whatever that is for you. Their diet preferences. Because for me, I, I definitely have challenges with people who are vegans. Not because there's anything wrong with that, it's because I'm not. So I generally don't date anybody who's a vegan because it's easier for me just to be transparent. Down the road it might change, but for me that's what's true for me. So having those things clear in what you, have, what you want as at least a minimal list of um, deal breakers, red flag type things. You know, if they're, I don't know, if, if, they're, if they're judging and blaming the exes all the time, I'm not interested. Do your own work. Work your own, work your own process so you can become a whole person. Ideally be thankful for your past relationships, honestly, because of what they taught you, presuming you learned something from them. So having a list of deal breakers is important to know because if you don't have that, you may go with somebody who, who actually is breaking the, what you, is not lying with what you want, put it that way. I've been on a couple of dates where, I, because one of my requirements, by the way, just to put out the universe and be transparent about it, one of my requirements is I'm looking for a partnership in business and in love. I'm looking for a partner who will be speaking in front of audiences with me who brings her skills and messages with mine to come in together so we can both be greater in our, in our delivery and message than we can do apart. That's a big ask, but I know the universe can provide. And I'm using that very, very metaphysically for a moment. It is Sunday after all. But the understanding is that I'm, I'm clear that what I want requires that. So if I meet somebody who is a nurse or a, um, a secretary, that it doesn't matter how attractive she is to me, Without certain pieces in her makeup, maybe, now, if she's already started doing stuff on the side business that lines up to what we do, then great. But if somebody's really her lifelong path is to be an employee for a company, I'm not probably going to be a fit for what I'm doing. So that's a deal breaker for me. But I've got to be honest with myself that I've got to have that. Because if it's not that, it's not going to work. 
So I'm hoping for you, you understand that you may have some things that are definite requirements for you, that are what you want to have, must be that partnership, must be in that partnership. So when you go on dates, you can pre-qualify before you even go out. Instead of going out with people who don't fit, you can actually be clear of what you really want. And again, that's preparation. Another piece of this, and this is the bigger piece, even that deeper, deeper, you know, stepping down deeper and deeper, is if you haven't um, cleaned up your past. I did mention, did talk about this yesterday. I think yesterday before about um, about your, your past tripping up your future. Yeah, I did that yesterday. If you haven't made peace with your past, cleaned it up, done resolution, done forgiveness, resolution of your past relationships. It's going to leak into your present future and future relationships. So meaning that if you go on a first date, you start getting close, you start talking about stuff, you might start talking about how bad your past relationship was. Not an ideal thing to present. Making peace with your past relationships, like I said earlier, where you can actually be thankful for what happened before. Now, for some of you, there might be an effort to go that far back and do that deeper work. But you can get to the point where you can be thankful. I'm thankful for every one of my relationships because it got me where I am now. And I know for some of those relationships, they helped me write my book. <laughs> and 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 some of the they also contributed to my uh, messaging for my daily Facebook Live. So I'm thankful for that too. But I also did the inner work to heal the judgments, the resentments, the grief. The, sorry, the guilt and the grief, all of that stuff as well. So there's different levels here: how you dress for yourself, how you dress for them. Get clear about what you do want, do want, and don't want, and also get clear about your past relationships, healing that stuff, so you can be free to love the way you want. These are a few ideas. There's a lot more besides that, I'm sure. I just don't, this is the ones I want to get to you in this talk. So my, my invitation to you is before you go on a next date, a first date, get clear. Take the time to know what you really want. Take the time to make peace with your past, however that works. I offer coaching for that, which I'll put a link in the comments for that as well. Respect yourself. That's another piece. Okay, this is a PS. Take care of yourself and respect yourself so that when you choose a date, it's not something from desperation. Let me say it another way that's not coming out right. Sometimes when you go on a date, and I've been on dates with women that have felt like this to me, there was a certain hunger, need, desire that was just wanted. And it wasn't for pleasure, by the way. It was for like needing for company, needing to be like taken care of. They were worried about missing some result they needed. That isn't pretty. So take care of yourself on the level of self-support, self-love, self-care so that you don't need to be on the date. How to, and I mean this intentionally, that when you go on a date, you're not attached. Because attachment to a result generally, generally is, is fixated and it's very unpleasant to be on the receiving end of it. So when you start really learning and taking care of yourself so that when you go on a date, it's, an over, it's an, um, a level of overflow, of abundance, of ease, of grace, then it works. So So that's five. Yeah, okay, give me five things to play with. So that, that piece I'm talking about is actually my self-love practice. I'm kind of leaning in that direction so I want to talk about it because it's a piece that we don't, we don't remember to do. And a friend of mine posted today was reminded me of this about self-love first. It's so tempting to go looking out there for love in relationships, looking out there on your dates, looking out there to have what you want from somebody else. But when you love yourself first and you support yourself first, one, you don't need those dates. And secondly, you'll choose a better quality of date. So add that to your bucket of choices. So there's five things to play with. I hope this is making sense. There'll be links in the comments for this, for my self-love practice I mentioned in my book, and also to talk to me so you can get some clarity and guidance on the past stuff you've got to resolve and get clear where you want, where you want to go. And I hope if you go on first dates, you do them from a place of, of real sovereignty. That was a good word that came up. Hmm. Sovereignty, let me try that for a second. Sovereignty, sovereignty is where you really own who you are. And all things I talked about will be part of that. It's a place of honoring and respecting yourself when you go on a date, so you don't, so you don't. So when you go on a date, if your date doesn't match where you really are, who you really are, if you're comfortable, confident, and willing to walk away. That's sovereignty, it's freedom, basically. But when you have sovereignty in your choices, then everything moves in alignment. And the things I mentioned before will start you on that road. Sovereignty, that's the word for today. Um, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'm realizing I think I've, I've summarized what I want to say today. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned earlier. Um, during the week, I dress up a bit nicer, but weekends I get casual, so that's why I'm dressed up today like this. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, why not? 
I've done 836 of them. But you can watch them on my personal page every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here um, on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook and also a YouTube channel. I'll give you those links. Um, my personal page, sorry, my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Please like my page. You can find them all there in reverse order. And more easily, I'm discovering, you can find them on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Again, all my social media is Barry Selby, uh, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can please subscribe to my channel. I welcome that. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. So all of my broadcasts are there. This one will be up there shortly. Again, I'll put the links in the comments for um, a chat with me, my self-love practice, and my book. All three of those things will help you prepare for your next date. Just saying. And if you have any war stories, okay, I'm going to put that out there, okay. If you have any war stories about dates you want to share with me, please put in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've got any learnings from what I said, let me know that too. And questions, of course, as well. I welcome that. And if you happen to have, just um, there's things coming through, some other ideas about first dates that would help, please put in the comments and I'll incorporate them into my talks as well. I welcome the input. So with that, I thank you for watching, as always. Um, I appreciate you being with me. Hey, Huntley, good to see you, sir. I'm just signing off, so I hope you watch from the beginning. I thank you for being with me, as always. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. And I wish you well. If you're going to first dates, Take heed of what I said. Those five things will change your life. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.